Hey guys, I just dropped 30 Photoshop tips for Photoshop's 30th anniversary and you guys absolutely loved them and I said if you did, I would give you 10 more. So here's 10 Photoshop tips that you probably don't know. Hey Cafe Crew, Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe. And now I'm gonna give you 10 more tips. So do we make this 30 tips part four or is it 40 tips? Who knows, I'm gonna give you 10 Photoshop tips right now to celebrate Photoshop's 30th anniversary. All right, and I've got a couple of announcements slash suggestions regarding coronavirus that I'll put at the end of this video for the cafe crew. A lot of the people are just kind of kind of stumbling in and finding these tutorials. So let's just jump in and do the tips for them. Cafe crew, I'll see you guys at the end. All right, let's do our very first tip. And this one's kind of a fun, you know, when you're making selections, Let's grab our selection tool. And sometimes, you know, people want to make a, you know, maybe an oval shaped selection. I'm going to hold down the space bar and move it here. But what if I wanted to make this the same angle as the magic wand? It's pretty hard to do that, but here we go. Check this out. If I go up under select and then I go down to transform selection. Now I get free transform, but it works on selections. So if I move outside, now it goes to rotation. We can change the shape. All right, here's an interesting one using the shape tool. I'm just gonna create a new layer on top. And what I wanna do here is I wanna create some kind of a starburst effect to come off here. So I'm sure you're all familiar. If we go down here under the line tool, you're gonna to see there's different things here. And one of them is the custom shape tool. But the one we're gonna look at here is the polygon tool. And you've probably seen this, like generally, you know, you create things like that with it. Well, there's a couple more options in here. I'm just gonna undo that. And let's have a look. If we go down here, we can change it to a star. So that means now if I draw, I can create stars with this. Okay, it gets much better than that. Let's go even further. So with this tool selected, I can change the sides. So let's make it 12. So we can make a 12 sided star. All right, that's one of those, you know, as seen on TV, Starburst kind of effects, but let's go even further. If we go under here, we can change the indent. And if I increase this indent right up to about 90%, watch what happens. Now I can create this kind of star effect, you know, and I could put it on here, you know, things like uh, just change the blend mode to something, like maybe a vivid light, we're gonna give it a blur. Let's give it a motion, a radial blur. Yeah, we'll rasterize it. Let's zoom it from the center. So it's going to be from about there. Click, oh, increase it. Click OK. And you can see the kind of things we can do with that. All right, here's a really interesting one. Have you ever worked with actions? Let me just open up the actions panel. And by the way, I'm releasing a course on actions and automation on Photoshop Cafe. It's a three hour course. So check that out. Um, but let's have a look at actions. So say we've got all these actions in here, frequency separation, luminosity masking, and high pass sharpening. Do you wanna see the written steps for this? Well, you can actually get the steps from an action. You could do it the slow way, which is opening each action and looking at it. Or you can get the written instructions by doing this. So we're gonna choose the action set. Then we're gonna click under here at the menu and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose save actions. But before you do, hold down the option command key that's alt control on Windows and choose save actions. And now it's gonna give you a text file. So let's save that text file on the desktop. So it's not saving the action, it's saving the text file. There it is, actions text. And let's double click to open it in a text editor. And if you look at this, now it gives us the breakdown of the action showing all the steps and all the settings so you can actually learn from your actions and reproduce those yourself. Now, here's an interesting one. Have you ever wondered what the average color of the entire image is? This is a great way for neutralizing a color cast, by the way. So I wanna know the average color of this whole thing. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna hide the text layers because obviously we don't care about that or this. We're just gonna look at the image here. So I wanna create a layer on top that has all the layers in there. 
So if I hold down Control, Option, Command, which is just pretty much everything, and then E, it'll create a composite layer. And I showed this in the last tip how to do that. So it's a composite layer. So if I hit the Alt or the Option, Show Hide Everything Else, notice everything's there. So it's a way of creating a layer with everything on it without flattening everything. Okay, so here's how you find the average color. Go under Filter, go to Blur. Then under Blur, I want to choose Average. And I click OK. And this gives me the average color. So watch what happens if I go here and I put that to color blending mode. This is the average color of the whole image. Now you could just use this if you wanted, you know, to create an interesting effect. But if I invert this command I and now drop the opacity all the way down and I bring it in, notice how that can actually neutralize the color. Now I could just do the overall image or I could do different areas. So why don't we grab this area over here and I want to know the average color there. So I'm going to hit control J to copy that to a new layer. And I'm just going to mind click to make sure it's selected. And this is the area we've got here. Now to find the average color in here, we just go up under filter. We go down blur and then choose average. And that there is the average color in that area that we've selected. Depending on what you want to do, you might want to work in different areas. So may maybe here I want to grab the average color of, say, his pants. I'm just going to hit the Alt or the Option key. And right now I'm just using the Quick Selection tool. And let's just roughly do that. Great. So then we're just going to copy this, Command J, copy that to a new layer. So we've got two areas now. We've got the pants and we've got that. Let's select the pants by clicking, control clicking to load the selection, choose filter, blur, average, and there's the average color of these pants. Now you could use this for selecting colors for painting or different things like that. So if we go here and we change this to color blend mode, that's the color. So what we've done there is we've just bought our average color and you could imagine all kinds of retouching things you could do there to kind of smoothen out and even out colors. All right, so I want to create a layer that has everything on it really quickly. So I'm going to hit Shift, Alt, Control, and that would be Shift, Option, Command, and E. And what it's done is it's merged all those layers into that visible layer. I created a brand new layer first, and everything's in there. And now I can do something, you know, like Control M for curves, and I can colorize this. So let me make it a little bit darker. And maybe we're going to go into the colors here. I'm going to increase a little bit of blue there into the shadows, making it a little bit more ominous. There we go. Great. So now we've got this on top. Well, what if we just wanted to blend that in on the sides and keep everything the same? Well, what we're going to do is create a new layer mask. So we're clicking on the mask there. Now we've got the mask. And to blend this in, we just simply do black to white. So hit the D key to reset the foreground and background colors. Choose the gradient tool. Up the top here, we want to make sure we're using linear. Black to white, linear. This is foreground to background. You might see that under basics. I moved mine to the top. Linear, normal mode, 100% opacity. And now if we click and drag, what essentially we're doing now is we're just blending in these two layers. So we've got the coloring kind of in the background here, but we've got a little bit more of the bluish kind of tone here. Now, if I want to add it on the other side, this is the problem. If I grab my gradient and I go this way, notice we can add it on that side, but it takes away from the other side. So let me hit Control Z. So I want to have it going on both sides. How do I do that without overriding the other gradient? It's actually quite simple. Instead of using white to black, foreground to background, go up here and use this option. You'll see it under basics, foreground to transparent. And now I can click and drag across and now I'm applying that across the other side. And notice how now it's just kind of blending that together without overriding the other gradient. Okay, what if we wanted to do some other masking, like maybe put a circular mask on top of there? We've already created a mask, so how can I mask this twice? Well, I'll show you. What we're going to do is we're just going to put this into a layer group. So actually Control G or Command G will do that. Now it's in a group, and guess what? Now I can add another mask and of course I can go back to my black to white again 
and watch this now I can just have it apply so that's just in the ground or we can have that effect just applying in the sky so now we're able to create a double mask effect and by the way you can keep stacking these if you want to add more masks just keep putting them inside groups I uh, control G so we could go there we could create another mask and you could keep going so you can add multiple masks to any image by putting them in layer groups all right so let's get rid of that layer mask really quick I'm just going to right click and choose delete layer mask now if I choose apply layer mask that'll build that into the transparency of the image if I delete it it just gets rid of it like it never existed all right let's go in here and do something inside of camera raw so we're going to choose filter we're going to go to camera raw filter all right so now I want to make some adjustments in here now you can go ahead and you can move the sliders here or you have this option to go under here and we can do hue saturation and luminance independently over different parts of the image so let's do luminance so we're going to click here and I'm going to increase the luminance on the skin tones see how it's just affecting those areas that would be skin tones maybe we could increase that on the dragon there or we could darken it see how we are able to target those different areas based on the color now if we go under here we can also do things like saturation so if I want to increase maybe the saturation in here I can select that blue and then click and drag up notice it makes the blue areas more saturated or we can desaturate them by pulling them all the way down so we can go into these different areas and adjust the saturation by simply clicking on them and then of course we've also got the other option that we can change the hue so we've got a kind of greenish color there we could move it around and that will change the hue or the actual color on these different areas like if we look at the skin tone see how we can change that of course we don't want to do that but there we go and so we can adjust the hue saturation and luminance by using these on, stre on screen controller also works with black and white mix so if we were to go here and we were to convert to say black and white we're like here we are in black and white but if we go up under here and we choose a black and white mix we can lighten certain areas by simply clicking on them based on their color and we can darken other areas by dragging down so see how we have that control just by dragging up and dragging down so we can brighten and darken different parts of the image to suit your taste right there on screen let me just click OK and here's a little trick it's not part of the tips but this is kind of a bonus one of the things I like to do sometimes is add a black and white layer and then I'm going to change this to luminosity and if we hide it and show it notice how we're able to adjust the lightness and darkness of that image based on the lightness and darkness of that underneath and the other thing that works quite well too sometimes is to choose color and then take the opacity all the way down and just bring it up just a little bit and now what we're doing there is we're just slightly desaturating that image in a way that I think looks a lot cooler than just desaturation all right so here's the thing what if I wanted to export a layer like maybe just this layer here with Taylor and by the way this is a composite I did with Taylor Davis um, it was from a shoot that we did recently uh, check out her stuff Taylor Davis violin she's incredible and you can see her on YouTube so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide these layers up top just so we can just get down here and we can start to select the layers underneath so what if I want this layer here and I can see that's Taylor what if I want to export export her as just by herself so I can right click here and I can export this notice I can export as a ping so if I quick export as a PNG this is going to come out as a new image and I'm going to save it which means it would export out that shape with the transparency and if I wanted to export these as a JPEG I could also do that the settings are up here under Photoshop preferences and then you'll see export if I have ping and transparency turned on when I right click it exports as a PNG I can also choose other formats let's choose a JPEG now it's set to a JPEG and then I right click on the name and then it's quick export as now it's a JPEG and we can save it that way all right let's look at something here using adjustments so say I went in here and I created an adjustment uh, such as a I don't know image adjustment we're going to create a curves adjustment 
So if I went in here and I created this curves adjustment and I set it like this to increase the amount of contrast, and then I click OK, now I've applied it. Now if I want to reapply it maybe to a different part of the image, this dragon, and I want exactly the same settings, what I can do is go up and Image, Adjustments, Curves. Now hold down the Alt or the Option key and click on Curves. And notice that the previous settings I dialed in here. So normally when you open up Curves, it's going to be blank. If you want to reuse the previous settings, hold down the Alt or the Option key when you open the dialog box and it's going to show the previous settings. So you can reuse them or exaggerate them or whatever you want to do. Now, last tip. Now, if you want to reset this, you want to hit the reset button. Well, there is no reset button, you say. Well, if you look over here, see the cancel button. Hold down Alt or Option, now becomes reset. Click on it, resets it to its default values, and then you can create it. And that works quite well sometimes, you know, when you're in curves and you're trying to get some, and it just becomes a mess. And you just hit Alt Option, reset, and then you can go back in and make better settings. So I'm curious, how many of those tips were new to you and did you find them useful? Let me know in the comments underneath. And by the way, if you guys are new here to Photoshop Cafe and or you've been here a while and you haven't subscribed yet, I consider hitting that subscribe button, become part of the Cafe crew. Now, when you do subscribe, make sure you turn on those notifications because if you don't turn on all notifications, YouTube is not going to let you know when I upload a new video. So if you're already subscribed, make sure that you've got all those options on. And if you're freshly subscribed, turn on the notifications and you'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. All right. So at the beginning of this video, I said I wanted to make an announcement around the COVID-19 coronavirus. So when you're watching this video, it may be well past or you could be at home right now, um, not able to go to school, not able to go to work or home for whatever reason. And so there's a couple of things I, I do want to talk about. One, I'm going to try and upload a little bit more content for you guys. Um, so you know, I've got something for you to work on. And maybe even we could do some live streams and perhaps even some challenges. I don't know if that's just stupid ideas. Let me know in the comments underneath if that's something you guys are interested in. And if you are interested maybe in doing live streams, what times would be best for you? You know, tell me the time and your time zone. And we'll see what happens. If there's enough interest, then we'll, we'll do some live streams during this time so we can kind of come together as a community. Um, and if not, I'll just see if I can upload a little bit more and give you guys, um, you know, just a little bit more, uh, a little bit more content than usual. And I did just want to say something, you know, because I've been out and about this week and, um, and a lot of you have experienced it. So I went out to the grocery store and, you know, there was plenty of groceries. I went back the next day and it was empty and it was just people everywhere. All the shelves were empty. It was crazy. I posted this on Facebook and uh, a number of people posted pictures and comments and said they're seeing the same things everywhere. So if you see things like fresh fruit and vegetables, just remember you can only eat so much. So don't take more than you need um, because it's going to go to waste and other people are not going to be able to have any. So try to avoid stockpiling and try to avoid, you know, hoarding food, you know, get enough food. I would say, you know, It'd be a good idea to have enough food to last two weeks in case you are quarantined. Um, and remember though, you know, fruit and vegetables are going to have a shelf life of a, of a few days to a couple of weeks. Don't go beyond that. You know, if you do pick up some things, pick up some frozen goods and some canned goods. Don't get mountains of them because there has to be enough for everybody to go around. If everybody rushes like they're doing right now to buy all this food, there's not enough for other people. There's enough food to go around if we are all just, you know, not greedy or selfish. Um, so anyway, guys, you know, for what it's worth, you know, I just, just want to say that and please stay safe. Um, you know, wash your hands a lot and, you know, just try to stay away from places where you could catch it. And, you know, let's all stick together here as a cafe crew and we're going to come through this, um, better days are ahead. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you like this, smash the like button into dust and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.